Recording. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the IPFS weekly call for Monday, 30th of September 2019. I am Aching Brain, I will be your host. Uh, we are going to have, well, a, a round of community announcements if anyone types furiously into the agenda. And if not, then uh, Ira from We Decentralize is going to tell us all about the work that she's doing um, to, to bridge different decentralized communities and and just generally make us all talk to each other and be a lot more special. So do stick your name in the doc if you're attending, because otherwise, how do we know? Um, could I get a note taker, please? Ah, oh, thanks, Ollie. What a star. Okay. Uh, are there any other agenda items? Silence is compliance. Okay, cool. Here, take it away. Okay, amazing. I'm unmuted. Brilliant. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ira or Irina uh, Bolshevsky. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Redecentralize. And I think I can even share it, uh, share my screen with you in a minute and show you some of the things. Um, but really briefly, it's um, a nonprofit organization sort of researching and advocating for a freer, decentralized web and net. Um, really sort of kind of pushing forward the idea of decentralization more broadly instead of supporting an individual project um, in the interests of greater resilience and privacy and autonomy and choice when it comes to internet services. So it's a kind of, it's a nostalgic kind of name that um, harkens back to that sort of early feeling about the web and net where it felt free and anyone could use it and everyone could get involved um, versus now where so many people are sort of trapped within the, sort of the walled gardens of Facebook or Google or Amazon um, where you know in a world where we increasingly depend on digital so much of that digital infrastructure is controlled and designed by a tiny handful minority of companies um, and that just means that we as kind of consumers and as societies get a worse deal in terms of choice um, so I why don't I start with telling you guys a little bit about the history of the project perhaps um, and let me share so um, me and a couple of friends uh, sort of about six years ago, I think this was just after the Snowden revelations, we started a list of alternative internet projects. And uh, we got hundreds of different projects listed. Uh, and this has kind of been, as you can see, there's been over 500 commits and lots of contributors. So it was really a, this amazing crowdsourcing effort to show that there's lots of different alternatives that do exist. Um, and we kind of individually knew a lot of amazing projects that were happening uh, often in kind of basements and people weren't talking to each other and weren't sort of necessarily thinking about business models or user experience or adoption and we wanted to get people to start collaborating more but also thinking about some of those things so we started doing uh, i think founder interviews which i will show you here so this is the website redecentralized.org um and basically we kind of interviewed cool projects so obviously we've got juan from ipfs um but also open bazaar and Fermat, and uh back when uh zuka was doing tahoe laughs um ethereum various others really just sort of um to give people a sense that there was lots of really amazing exciting interesting things happening in the decentralization space um that was really really interesting and successful uh we also organized a conference back in 2015 um which was this really incredible wonderful time where we actually got um lots of different people together but it was quite a small thing focused on collaborations focused on things like tales from the vegan movement 
thinking about how do you um, push forward sort of unpopular ideas um, and kind of get people interested, how to talk about these things differently, but also uh, sort of thinking about what, what are digital rights? Should there be digital rights? Um, you know, cyberpunk to blockchains, uh, various kind of things around archiving. And now what we're doing more and more of is um, showcasing, oh God, wait, no. my sort of remote thing is in the way of my tabs, which is kind of annoying. Should be able to drag it out of the way. It's a common annoyance of zooming. Oh man, here we go. Um, now we are doing redigests as well so on the on the kind of on the blog uh we are review kind of just telling people about various different events and talks that we thought were interesting as uh, so this is something that uh Herben is kind of really leading on helping and um reviewing different projects and again this is quite broad it we're sort of really trying to um instead of promoting any individual project or approach thinking about the ways in which decentralization can bring about positive social change um, and kind of empower people and, and sort of rebalance um, how digital serves people and who it, who it serves. And so there's everything from looking at sort of the EU's internet um, plans and interoperability, um, unionizing against YouTube, and we list uh, various events that are happening around the world. So so this is kind of the main um, thing. Uh, as uh, as Oli mentioned, the September Redigest went out a couple of days ago, which mentions the rebooting the way of, of trust conference, activity pub, um, various different discussions and debates um, about security. About uh, also that we had a whole discussion about sort of trolling and uh, in how how do you how do you deal with different stuff? What Facebook. Is saying about data portability and privacy, um, NITA, etc. Any thoughts, questions? Should I, should I keep keep going? Everyone is silent. Or I can't hear any of them. Keep going. <laughs> Amazing. So. Um, so to talk about, um, I mean, people come, I think there's a, there's a really interesting discussion about what does decentralization mean? And um, so when we sort of started six years ago, no one really talked about decentralization very much, or they did, but in very specific communities. And um, I think in the last few years, decentralization has become more of a buzzword. And obviously the kind of, rise in cryptocurrencies has encouraged that and however i think there is this really important aspect about thinking what does success look like what do we actually measure what you know what do we care about like is decentralization good in and of itself uh is it a means to some other end and what are those ends and how do we know if we're making progress so one of the things that i'm really interested in is trying to Kind of bring people together to talk about these things like talk about you know what what is it that we care about like i know that i care about fairness like i i don't i don't i get very upset and frustrated using facebook i get very very irritated by google's recapture form that just feels like it's punishing me for um using browsers that kind of block uh various tracking and cookies and then i have to constantly put it in just to do search so i don't even use google search anymore because it just irritates me too much and i have to I have to use um, DuckDuckGo. And, you know, I, I care about sort of giving people greater control of the tools that they use. So, and what, you know, what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of hackability of our projects? What does that mean about having smaller communities and having digital infrastructure and digital services that are, um, that are shaped by those communities? And, and how do we how do we measure that? How do we sort of see progress over time? 
So I think there's there's one thing around um, kind of metric success, like you know why why are we doing this? What's the what's the bigger um, vision that I think are really interesting questions? And then there's also well, what are the different components of that? How do we get there? Um, a couple of different sort of campaigns and uh, conversations that we are having at the moment. One is very much around interoperability and open standards. So quite soon I will be putting something out around, um, well, talking about open protocols and talking about how email works, but instant messaging doesn't. And events and social media don't work. You have to, you have, to have a Facebook account to be invited or attend a Facebook event. Um, you have to have a Twitter account to interact with people on Twitter. You have to have a, a LinkedIn account. However, um, it should be possible to have an account with somebody else where you prefer the terms and conditions of that service without losing access to your friends, without sort of facing the consequences of um, social isolation. And um, what does that look like in practice? What does that mean? And how, how can we make that happen? Like, what's the, is it sort of build alternatives and get them adopted enough um, that other companies have to um, use them? Is it legislation? And um, what has been tried before? Because, you know, I was with W3C and we, we wrote some things and some standards around social web uh, standards that haven't been adopted obviously by the likes of Facebook and Twitter they didn't show up they didn't come to the in during the conversations but a lot of the decentralized ecosystem are adopting them so activity pub um, has been adopted by a whole range of um, applications another interesting area is identity and this sort of uh, I personally think digital identity is a is a bit of a misnomer a lot of people don't really know exactly what that means but how do we um, authenticate across different services and what information gets stored with um, the company what, what information do we keep and how does that work how can we make um, a better friendlier more privacy preserving secure user experience happen across different applications if we're aiming to use an ecosystem of different applications as opposed to the sort of the one monolith that is trusted. How do you do trust if you're not relying on a really big brand like Facebook to hold that trust? How does trust happen in, in smaller things? Um, and I think another third thing is obviously adoption. How do we move from, um, I think we all probably exist in a bit of a bubble where everyone's really excited about uh, all these sort of decentralized projects and services and they're really cool but the the majority of people don't know about this don't understand it and don't know why it matters and don't know what it means practically like what what are the different benefits and to what extent can more decentralized approaches bring benefits that people care about and to who so thinking about who are going to be the users is it going to be companies is it going to be individuals is it going to be governments um, so really centralized helps sort of convene some of those in, uh, conversations. Um, we have a, we have a newsletter and we keep meaning to have a mailing list, but mostly we keep meaning to promote other people's discussions and mailing lists. Um, and I haven't heard of that many, but you guys should obviously, uh, show what you guys have. Uh, we have a matrix channel where people mostly talk about tech. Um, so it's very, very specific, um, but it's the really centralized matrix channel, which is really lovely. And we will be running a unconference on Friday, the 25th of October in London, the day before MozFest. So lots of people are coming into town for MozFest. And so we're kind of bringing together um, sort of some of the really centralized community to start kind of working on some of these things, um, looking at collaborations, thinking about how do we take things forward, um, putting together sort of various plans and probably further workshops. I know there's a, there's a couple of organizations that are really interested in um, running the really decentralized campaign, uh, sorry, the interoperability campaign with me. 
there's a lot of work around identity happening with um, governments increasingly thinking they need to have a more sort of um, self-sovereign or decentralized or other kind of privacy preserving approach. Um, yeah. Any thoughts, any questions? You've been re-decentralizing for some time now. Like, so the last conference was in 2015. Yes. Um, I'm wondering, do, do you see any significant progress? You mentioned that we live in a bubble, like we're focused on decentralization all the time. Do, what progress do you see, if any, towards these goals, the, 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 the fuzzy goals of more control for users, less control for no less ill-defined control for giant corporations. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really interesting one. I mean, I th so one thing that has changed quite significantly in the last couple of years is the blind, the sort of the trust in companies like Facebook has obviously wavered after Cambridge Analytica and um, various scandals around you know, using people's phone number that, that you know, Facebook asked you for, for sort of two-factor authentication to essentially and, and use in selling that to advertisers. So various things are coming out which have made people realize, okay, this is a this is a company that that you know basically does what it wants and gets away with it because they're so huge. And if you think about it, um they get they have like 1.6, I think, billion active users that log in every single day that's like a fifth of the population of the planet i mean that's insane um i just i just think sometimes we kind of forget how completely crazy insane that is that one company um holds so much so much of the world's attention and the fact that everything's on that platform means that you know spreading mis misinformation especially voter suppression kind of adverts are really big on Facebook. So it's all these kind of things like, oh, if you're, if you're a black, um, vote by texting, you know, text this number to vote. Don't leave the house. It'll be nice and easy. Like these kind of adverts um, kind of uh, go, out, go out on Facebook and Facebook obviously working to remove that. But the, the reach of, the, of that platform is terrifying and their ability to, to sub, sort of subvert things. And even Facebook is sitting in there saying, well, someone should regulate us. So I think that the awareness is there and a lot of politicians and people are sitting there thinking, well, we need something different, um, but they don't know what. And very few people, are, um, at least in the mainstream, have very clear credible kind of interventions or uh, solutions i actually think that these do exist um and one of the one of the things that i'm interested in is kind of bringing that conversation to to a more mainstream discussion which is talking about things like well open protocols could really help shift things uh, investing in decentralized sort of resilient local solutions can can really help shift the power imbalance and and sort of um so i think the the desire has grown so that's really interesting um some adoption has happened so a lot of the projects sort of when we looked at them six years ago were really really immature and i think very difficult to use for a non-technical audience and that has shifted uh, people are very much more aware that design is important, usability is important. There's a lot more investment. Um, I think obviously crypto coins have, have really helped some people win the lottery and, and have money to spend on working on more usable services, which is really, really wonderful. Um, like the French government have adopted matrix instead of, uh, instead of a closed protocol. So some decisions and the, and the, increasing conversation that um, especially public money should be spent on open source um, and open things I think is starting to kind of um, roll things into a direction that uh, I mean I, I would generally support but I think one of the one of the questions is well this is a this is a big very diverse community people have very different uh, interests and to what extent could or should we be pulling in similar directions? 
um, if one of the things that we care about is diversity and and having variety, then um, you know you know we don't necessarily want to be repla replacing sort of Google or Amazon with a new crypto overlord um, who is going to make us all happy. Um, I mean, maybe maybe some people really want that, but. Um, um, so I, I, yeah, I think it's slow and I think it is also really hard. I think there's no, I think that what, what we're up against, especially things like Amazon, like selling things online, like people, people want to sell things online and almost 50% of all e-commerce in the United States goes through Amazon. So once you've outcompeted everybody once all the independent bookshops have shut down once everyone is on amazon marketplace um, and doesn't have their own supply chains you're not very incentivized to provide a cheap good user experience as the company because very few people have other options like there there's no alternatives and we are already getting to that stage where when we're talking about monopolies and big tech there aren't alternatives um so it's it's not it's not especially rosy. I think the, the future dominated by, by big tech and with kind of AI um, is, a, is a real threat. So all the more reason to uh, um, get much more radical and much more involved and talk to each other and think about the politics, think about the implications, think about the world that we want to see and actually push for it and work with the diverse range of organizations to make that happen and go to the re-decentralized conference and obviously come to the re-decentralized 2019 conference and you know and sign up to the newsletter um and and also just get involved i think there's a huge amount to do it's a largely a volunteer run kind of community organization very much as a kind of space for people to um contribute and get involved with projects that they're, they're interested in um, so there's there's ways in which to come and do fun amazing stuff and there's like really brilliant people who care about this that are just fun to chat with amazing anything else what what is your uh what are the uh, what does the team look like? What are, who's working on this? What do you work with on a day to day basis? Uh, on a day to day basis, so primarily it's me um, and uh, Herban who does the um, uh, the redigest, and then sort of Francis and Ross who were around sort of six years ago, kind of uh, are involved and want to be on the board when I get around to setting up a board and then people kind of drift in and out um, I think so some of the Inspiral kind of or DGov people um, like my friend Phoebe uh, kind of journalists other uh, tech people but then it's 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 a kind of changing cast one of the things that would really help um, make all this stuff more amazing is money so if any of you guys want to throw in a huge amount of money towards this beautiful, amazing nonprofit, then um, that would definitely speed things up and would be definitely acceptable. I would not say no. <laughs> there you go, a plea for funding for Really Centralized. It's a great cause. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe you should, you should consider donating. Um, this has been an amazing talk, uh, super exciting stuff going on. We're out of time, so I have to draw a close and some people start dropping off the call to go to other meetings. Ah, that's hideous. Uh, but thank you very much, Eric, for uh, coming along and telling us uh, what you've uh, been doing. This has been the IPFS Weekly Call. Um, thank you very much. Yay, and thanks, Alex, for inviting me. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>